the rare beasts of the road you probably don't remember. These aren't just any trucks. They're legends that defined ruggedness, power, and innovation. From secret engines to groundbreaking designs, I present you some of the rarest pickup trucks you may have forgot about. Chevy Big Ten Truck A special breed of the C-10 half-ton pickup that roamed the streets from 1975 to 1980. Now, what set the Big Ten apart was its beefed-up capabilities. This wasn't just any old truck. It was a heavy-duty, two-wheel drive machine designed to handle more weight than your standard C-10. Back in 79, the Big Ten was offered with an F-44 package that was all about toughness. You had two choices for the front springs, either 1,625 or 1,700 pounds, and for the back, a solid 2,000 pounds capacity. Add to that heavy-duty power brakes, beefier tires, and the option of a 305 V8 engine. Pretty impressive, right? But here's the kicker. The Big Ten had a secret weapon. While other trucks were struggling with the new catalytic converters required in 1975, which meant you had to fill up with more expensive unleaded fuel, the Big Ten sidestepped that whole mess. Thanks to its gross vehicle weight rating, it dodged the catalytic converter requirement, offering a breath of fresh air to truck buyers, especially those in fleets who were still enjoying cheaper leaded fuel. This clever workaround didn't just stop at dodging the catalytic converter. GM also tweaked the standard C10 and C15 models with a special hood seal and underbody air dam to meet emission standards and offered a range of rear axle ratios aimed at better fuel economy. But with the Big Ten, you could opt for lower axle ratios and even a powerful 454 V8 engine if you wanted. Now, finding a Big Ten, especially one with the 454 engine straight from the factory, is like finding a needle in a haystack. Out of almost 800,000 trucks built for that model year, only 5,726 were shortbed big blocks. That's rare. As for the specs, the 1978 Big Ten was a beast. It came with a 350 cubic inch crate V8, new motor mounts, a four barrel carburetor, and headers that connected to a Flowmaster dual exhaust for that sweet sound. It boasted a rebuilt three speed automatic transmission power steering and brakes, front disc brakes, and some models even had an aluminum radiator, dual electric fans, a lowered suspension for that sleek look, a wood bed and custom exhaust. Not to mention the retro vibe with an AM-FM radio, tilt steering, and those cool 2022 billet specialty magneto wheels wrapped in thick tires. The 1961 Ford Unibody pickup truck was a piece from Ford's F-Series lineup. It blended the cab and bed into one sleek piece of steel. Imagine that, a truck without the traditional gap between the cab and bed, all from way back in the early 60s. Ford rolled out this innovative unibody design in 1961, and it was something else. It allowed for a bigger cargo space, boasting 16% more room than its predecessors. But here's the twist. By 1964, Ford ditched this approach and went back to the classic body-on-frame setup. So why the short stint? Well, the unibody design was not just about looks, it was also a cost saver, cutting down on both materials and assembly time. The idea was pretty bold. With vehicles like the El Camino and Ranchero gaining popularity, Ford thought, why not make a truck that feels more like a car? They aimed at the suburban crowd, offering a vehicle that was practical yet stylish, something that could handle the chores but still be a smooth ride for the daily commute. Ford didn't stop at the unibody. They threw in 23 pounds of sound deadening in the cab, packed the seats with extra foam, and designed the doors to swing wider. Options like dealer-installed air conditioning, a panoramic rear window, and even optional seat belts and mirrors were all about adding comfort and choice. Under the hood, the standard power was a 223 cubic inch, 137 horsepower straight-six engine, paired with either a three- or four-speed manual transmission. And for those wanting more vroom, there was an optional 292 cubic inch V8. But here's the kicker. Despite its innovative design and features, the market didn't bite. The unibody truck had a significant flaw. Loaded up too much and the entire truck could bow, sometimes so severely that the doors jammed shut. Not exactly handy if you're trying to get into your truck, right? 
Because of these challenges, Ford said goodbye to the unibody design after just a couple of years. This makes the 1961 Ford unibody pickup a rare gem in today's collector market. 1955 Chevrolet Apache Pickup Truck This beauty wasn't just any truck. It was part of Chevy's Task Force series, which took over from the Advanced Design series and ran from late 1955 all the way to 1959. These trucks had some cool names. The light-duty ones were known as the Apache, medium-duty were called the Viking, and the heavy-duty trucks were dubbed the Spartan. So, what made the Apache stand out? Well, it was a major step up in terms of design and features. It was bigger, stronger, and way sleeker than its predecessors. One of the coolest things about it? It was the first in its line to offer a V8 engine since, believe it or not, 38 years. That's right. Under the hood, it boasted a 265 cubic inch engine, making it a powerhouse of its time. The design took a leap forward with the industry's first wraparound windshield, and for those who opted for the deluxe cab models, you got a wraparound rear window, too. The fenders had this sleek single headlight look with a one-piece emblem that just screamed modern. And for the first time in GM history, you could get trucks with power steering and power brakes, not to mention the upgrade to a 12-volt electrical system. Oh, and let's not forget, 1955 was the only year they offered a 7-foot-long bed, which was pretty unique. Diving into the specs, the Apache had a 114.0-inch wheelbase, weighed in at 3,385 pounds, and had a 17-gallon fuel tank. Engine-wise, you had the choice between a 235-cubic-inch Thriftmaster or the beefier 265-cubic-inch Taskmaster V8, paired with a three-speed manual transmission. But here's the kicker, folks. Why is the 1955 Apache considered a rare find today? Firstly, the Task Force series itself was a short-lived era, making any truck from this line a piece of history. And secondly, it had a bunch of one-year-only features like that seven-foot bed and the option for fender markers, cab trim, and that optional V8. If you got yourself an Apache fleet side, it even came with chrome trim along the box sides. Finding one with that last set of box trim? That's like finding a diamond in the rough. The GMC Sonoma GT, a cool and rare bird in the compact pickup truck scene. Imagine this. Back in 1992, GMC decided to stir the pot a bit. They introduced the Sonoma GT, a truck that borrowed its swagger from the turbocharged GMC Cyclone, but without hitting your wallet as hard or delivering that turbo punch. Here's a little background for you. Initially, this truck was known as the S15, kind of like its cousin, the Chevy S10. But GMC thought, nah, let's spice it up, and renamed it the Sonoma. And to add that special sauce, they rolled out the Sonoma GT, assembled with care by GMC truck and given its final touches by Production Automotive Services over in Michigan. So, what set the Sonoma GT apart? Picture this. It rocked a Cyclone-inspired body kit. While it shared the front and rear bumpers with the Cyclone, the rest of its aero kit was a bit more laid back. It wasn't just about looks, it included practical bits like fender bumperettes, lower door skirts, and those sleek rear quarter bed corners. Now, stepping inside the Sonoma GT was like getting a hint of the Cyclone vibe, with black and red piping on the door inserts and bucket seats. Although GMC decided to skip the embroidered logo on the headrest, the dashboard was pretty much a Cyclone clone, except for one little thing, no boost gauge, because remember, this truck didn't pack a turbo. Under the hood, the Sonoma GT boasted a beefy L35 Vortec 4.3-liter V6 engine, pumping out 195 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. This power was managed by an automatic 4L60 transmission, sending it all to the rear wheels. GMC didn't stop there. They threw in some top-notch Bilstein shocks, a smart torsion bar setup with dual-stage leaf springs and power brakes, all riding on BF Goodrich Comp TA tires. This setup gave the truck a solid grip and reliable braking, even without the turbo thrust. But here's the kicker. The Sonoma GT is super rare. Only 806 of these trucks were ever made, making it the unicorn of the sport machine's lineup. They rolled out in a few cool colors like black, apple red, white, aspen blue, teal, and forest green. 
Ford F-150 SVT Lightning. A true legend in the pickup world that zoomed onto the scene back in 93. This beast wasn't just any truck. It was the brainchild of the wizards over at Ford's Special Vehicle Team, or SVT for short. These guys were all about cranking out high-performance machines. And boy, did they deliver with the lightning. Now picture this. It's the early 90s, and the sports truck scene is heating up. Ford's looking around, seeing rides like the Chevrolet 454 SS making waves, and they think, hey, we need a piece of that action. Enter the lightning, their answer to the muscle truck craze. This truck was no ordinary F-150. We're talking about a souped-up, ninth-generation beast with a heart of pure power. Under the hood roared a 5.8-liter Windsor V8 engine, tuned to perfection to pump out 240 horsepower and a whopping 340 pound-feet of torque. And to handle all that grunt? A beefy E40D four-speed automatic transmission that meant business. But the Lightning wasn't just about raw power. Ford gave it a unique suspension setup to make sure it handled like a dream, with a twin I-beam design up front and leaf springs at the back. And it wasn't just the performance that turned heads. This truck had style, from its functional front air dam and fog lights to the snazzy lightning graphics and a choice of three colors, raven black, bright red, and oxford white. It was a looker. Inside, the sporty vibes continued with bucket seats, a sleek center console, and a leather-wrapped steering wheel that just screamed, Drive me! But as all good things often do, the lightning bolted off into the sunset in 1995, making way for a new F-150 design. However, like any true icon, it made a roaring comeback in 1999, even more powerful and refined than before. Now why is the 95 lightning a rare gem today? Well, with just about 11,563 of these bad boys ever made, they're a rare sight. They made up less than 1% of all F-Series trucks produced in that era. High price tags and niche appeal kept them exclusive back in the day, and now they're coveted collectibles. Finding one in mint condition, that's a challenge, but oh, the glory if you do. So there you have it, the tale of the 1995 Ford Lightning a truck that merged utility with unrivaled performance, setting the stage for the high-octane pickups we see today. It was, without a doubt, a trailblazer that left tire tracks in the hearts of truck enthusiasts everywhere.